As a responsible dog owner, you should also be familiar with how to do a physical exam on your dog at home. This way, you can check for any potential problems early on and get your dog the treatment it needs as soon as possible. Here's a quick guide on how to perform a physical exam on your dog at home. 1. Start by checking your dog's eyes. Look for any discharge, redness, or cloudiness. Also, check to see if the pupils are equal in size and normally respond to light. 2. Next, take a look at your dog's ears. Check for any redness, swelling, discharge, or bad odor. 3. Then, check your dog's nose. Again, look for any discharge, redness, or swelling. 4. Next, check your dog's mouth and teeth. Look for any redness, swelling, bad breath, or loose teeth. 5. Feel your dog's body for lumps, bumps, or unusual growths. Also, check its skin and look for bald spots or missing fur patches. If you notice any irregularities during your dog's physical exam, contact your veterinarian immediately. Early detection and treatment of health problems can help extend your dog's life and improve its quality of life. In this presentation, Dr. Liz Whitney is going to explain in more detail how to perform a physical exam on your dog. Hi, I'm Dr. Liz Whitney. I'm a veterinarian, and I've been caring for dogs and cats for the past 20 years. If you're like myself and the majority of my clients, you consider your pets very valuable members of your family. Because our companion animals can't tell us how they're feeling, I'd like to demonstrate some simple things that you can do at home to check for the health and well-being. Before we get started, it's important that you know that none of the things we'll see here today can take the place of a good health exam by your veterinarian. Today we're going to focus on the examination of the dog. This is William, and he's a Maltese. Realize there are probably a lot of the things that you notice every day that you don't even think about. And those are things like your pet's appetite, their general attitude, how they're walking, just a number of things that are probably good indicators that you aren't even thinking about. But we're going to show you some of the things that you might not think about every day. What you want to be able to do is when you look down on your dog, you should see a little bit of indentation at the waist. If you're not seeing that, then it could be that your dog is a little overweight. It could also be that they've got a really fluffy hair coat though. So you want to make sure that you get your hands on the dog and that you feel, okay? So what we want to be able to feel is just a little bit of skin and tissue over the ribs, but you do want to be able to feel the ribs. They shouldn't be sticking out or prominent, but you want to be able to easily feel them without having to search or press really hard, okay? If you can't press easily and feel them, then it probably means that your dog's overweight. Okay, the next thing that you want to think about is their hair coat. And you want to make sure that the pet's hair coat is kept dry and clean and free of any mats or stickers or grass seeds. You don't want any of those type of things in the hair coat. You also want to make sure that you don't have external parasites on the dogs, which would be like fleas or ticks. And of course, you're probably aware there are lots of things you can do to prevent fleas and ticks. Um, you should make sure that there aren't any lumps or bumps or any new type of growths or sores that maybe you haven't seen in the past. Um, as you just kind of gently run your hands along the dog, you check for any of those abnormal swellings, okay? And I don't feel anything at all wrong with William. He seems to be really healthy. Okay, the other thing is you don't want to have any bad odors. Usually a bad odor is an indication of a problem unless maybe they've been sprayed by a skunk or they've rolled in something really nasty, which we know dogs tend to do sometimes. The feet and the toenails are something that you want to pay attention to. Um, if I pick up little William's feet here, you can see he has white toenails. William's toenails are just a little bit long, but they're not too bad. Um, the average dog probably needs to have their nails trimmed approximately every four to eight weeks. Um, you can reduce the amount of time that, um, that you need to have those done by doing walks on asphalt or pavement so that it helps to keep the nails worn a little bit. Um, some dogs do have a little dew claw here on the inside, and be sure that you're aware if if those have not been removed, those also need to be trimmed. Now some people are brave enough to do nail trims at home and they can do that successfully because their pets are well mannered for it, but oftentimes you need to go to a groomer or to a veterinary professional to have those taken care of. Touch it, it's a little cool to the touch. A really dry or crusty nose can sometimes be an indication of a problem. Um, okay, we're going to move then to his eyes. 
this is typical of Maltese where you get a little bit of staining around the eyes and that's okay it's normal but you want to make sure that the eyes are both wide open there's no squinting and that if there is any crustiness or sleep in the eyes that you keep that clean with a moist cloth you want to make sure it's a damp soft cloth if you do see any squinting or you see any evidence of yellow thick discharge that's a reason you might want to visit the veterinarian the mouth um, he's recently had a dentistry. As you can see, the gums are really nice and pink. That's really good. If you ever think your dog's sick, one thing you want to do is look in their mouth and make sure that they're not pale or that there aren't maybe any bruises or darkness to the gums. That can be an indication of a problem. Another thing the vet might ask you to do is to just gently blanch out the color of the gum like so and see how fast it takes to refill. It should be less than two seconds in a normal healthy dog. Okay. Then as far as we were talking about how dental disease is a major source of other diseases in dogs and cats, the bacteria that accumulates in the mouth can cause infection of the heart and the urinary bladder or kidneys. So it's very important to try to keep the teeth clean. He's just got a tiny bit of tartar on his teeth, but not bad. There are a lot of things you can do at home to help care for the teeth by not only providing good nutrition, but also um, some people are willing to brush their dog's teeth. So that's something that can really help prevent visits to the veterinarian. Another source of problems with lots of dogs are ear infections. Uh, Willie's ears are pretty good. Um, some small breeds like William have accumulation of a lot of hair in the ear canal. That's something that you or a groomer can help to keep out of there so that we don't have problems with infection. Um, his canal looks nice and clean. The, this is called the pinna of the ear or the flap. That should look just a nice pink. It shouldn't be red or thick or painful. Um, you shouldn't smell any foul odors coming from the ear or see any significant wax accumulation. You can also sometimes get grass seeds in the ear or parasites like ticks will get down in there. So you want to make sure that you check these at least once a week and that everything looks good in there. Something else you need to check on your dog is their genital area. So since William's a little boy, we want to look here and make sure that there isn't any swelling or that there isn't any abnormal discharge or matting or soiling around his little boy parts. But they look really good, so I don't think that's a problem. The other thing in the rear end of the dog, and you may have heard of these, or maybe you haven't, are the anal glands. Especially small dogs and some larger dogs um, need to sometimes have these glands emptied, and usually that's maybe oh, every two months or so to have that done. Um, if they're not emptied on a regular basis, you can sometimes get, get a situation where they're too full and then they'll get an infection. But if you're noticing an odor in this area, the most likely thing is the anal glands and those may need to be expressed. Some people will do that at home, but the majority of people don't want to deal with that. So they take them to the vet or the groomer. It's Muffy's turn. Okay, so she wants to show you that she's different than Willie and that she has a different genital area here. And again, with the girl dogs, you want to make sure you don't see any soiling or matting that the hair is kept trim around the area. And she looks just fine. Another thing with girl dogs is that sometimes they can have problems with their mammary glands. There's actually, they can get breast cancer just like women can. So you want to make sure that you're feeling this area when you pet them a couple times a week. And if you notice any swelling or bumps or redness, then make sure you take a visit to the veterinarian. I want you to be aware that a number of the things we've pointed out here can be very separate topics on their own and can be separate videos. But it's important for you to remember too that there are things your veterinarian is trained to see that you won't be able to notice. So never let this take the place of a veterinary exam. I hope this has been a valuable lesson in home health care. Remember that to ensure the health of your pet companion, you want to make sure that you have a visit to the veterinarian at least once a year for a young healthy pet and two or more times a year for a senior pet. Thanks to Dr. Liz Whitney for that wonderful demonstration. An annual physical exam is an important part of keeping your dog healthy. It allows your veterinarian to check for potential health problems and ensure that your dog is up to date on vaccinations and other preventive care. Early detection and treatment of health problems can help extend your dog's life and improve its quality of life. So don't hesitate to schedule an annual physical exam for your furry friend.